Oh, I think it's that time again. Time for a tea break with me, Tasha. Oh, that's better. How are you all? I hope you had a really nice week. I know I did. I've got my bullet points again today, so I will be glancing at the screen. Um, and today's tea break is called the self-therapy thing. And ultimately, I'd really, really like to create a course at some stage for anyone interested in this subject, interested in getting well or using this technique on themselves. But also I'd welcome volunteers and um, any accredited mental health practitioners to assess the efficacy, the efficiency of um, some of the techniques that, that I'm putting together which I'm sharing, albeit in a really sort of um, small way in these tea breaks with Tasha. So how did you get on last week? Last week we talked about using our feelings as a barometer to um, make us just stop and pay attention to what we're thinking and why that is incredibly important for us to do that, especially if we find ourselves in the misfortune of being caught in repetitive, um, unhelpful thinking habits and thinking patterns. And I suppose it makes sense for us to cover the selective watering of positive thinking processes a bit later on, and maybe that can be um, in another tea break at another time. So I, sh I would just also like to mention that these techniques that I'm sharing with you um, these past couple of weeks have actually been around for thousands of years already um, and are practiced widely in disciplines such as Buddhism or Advaita, or be in a slightly different way from a slightly different sort of perspective. Um, but also these subjects and, and ideas that I'm sharing are also well known in science and in psychology and in particular cognitive behavioural therapy, which um, is at least 65 years old. So it's, you know, an old and well-established practice that I'm sharing. And um, cognitive behavioural therapy was actually first introduced by Aaron Beck in around 1960. And that's not to mention there are advanced, uh, huge advances in neuroscience um, which are focusing on, on um, neuronal cells within the brain which are activated during certain thought processes and what impact that has on the body. So, you know, not only have these techniques been around for thousands of years, um, but scientifically established for at least 65 years, there's also current research going on into them at the moment. So let's get back to today's topic, which is self-therapy. So perhaps last week, if you took part, you identified this messy, knotty, grey cloud that you had to put to one side just to give yourself um, a few moments of respite, rest, peace and quiet. And those messy grey clouds, when we sort of notice they're there, even if it is just for the purposes of putting them to one side for a few moments, they can seem a bit overwhelming. And um, for the majority of people, myself included, it's really difficult to know where to start sort of trying to unpick all of that. So hopefully last week we've been able to garner some strength um, in those moments where we managed to find a bit of peace and calm for ourselves. And um, it's good because we're going to need that strength and that positive mental sort of attitude to be able to begin starting to tackle those messy grey clouds. So I should just mention that um, of course you may already be in the queue for some kind of counselling or therapy and that's absolutely fine and just you know carry on being in the queue um, or it, you could find yourself in a position where you can't afford to pay for any sort of extra therapy that you might need. So in which case, today's subject matter, self-therapy, is, is going to be really useful to you. So um, going back to categorising those messy clouds, you can actually categorise them into physical and practical 
elements and emotional and psychological elements. So self-therapy is ultimately, in a nutshell, the practice of deep listening. But to ourselves, how is that possible? Well, hopefully, it's all going to become clear. So no matter how hard things are in our own lives, we are usually quite good listeners when it comes to our loved ones and our nearest and dearest. And more than good listeners, usually if somebody else comes to us with their problems, we can rattle off suggestions and ideas of um, you know things they can do, steps they can take to sort of help themselves. So I'm basically just suggesting that we use some of those skills that actually we already all possess and direct them towards ourselves. And how are we going to do that? It's simple, we're just going to use technology that we already have. So literally everybody has a phone. Everybody's phone these days has a voice recording capability or um, a video recording capability. I'm recording my video on my phone today. And I have been experimenting for the past few years um, with both journaling and making my own private video diaries. Um, and the whole purpose of those journaling, journaling episodes and making my own video diary episodes has been to, to just be as honest and open and literally get everything off of my chest that I possibly need to, perhaps I would never speak to anybody else about in a month of Sundays or ever, ever, ever. And um, no matter how bizarre or crazy as well, just, you know, completely going for it. And then I would simply read back my own journals or listen back to what I had spoken in my video diary. And the purpose of this journaling and video diary making is not actually to ever share this publicly. It's um, only really for our own viewing and our own listening. So we don't even have to make ourselves presentable, stop ourselves from swearing, crying. We don't have to stop ourselves from complaining, grumbling, bitching um, out of a sense of um, disloyalty, you know, not being able to say that in public, not feeling as if we wouldn't be understood if we sort of said all that out loud, um, shame or bad manners. I found that the voice recording video diary technique worked better um, for me. Um, and I, I actually, now that I've considered and contemplated and reflected upon both of these different techniques, I think that it's the winning technique. Because it was in the listening to my own voice I found much more than simply an understanding of the words that I was saying and even my ability to articulate that or not articulate it. Um, I actually started to feel myself in a more compassionate way, um, perhaps in the way that I would view a loved one, friend, relative, if I was listening to them speak. So that was a really big noticing for me. I understood myself better so there wasn't this big grey uh, messy cloud um, you know that I was so overwhelmed by it's it's almost as if just in the saying out loud of the issues and then the listening to that back I was now in a position of deeply listening to myself and actually being able to view it much more objectively um, and that skill of deep listening that is already there for other people seem to be activated quite spontaneously. So I did give the time during these video diary recordings to not only record myself but um, to actually listen to myself back after. Now sometimes I did that straight away and sometimes I did it a day later. Um, and sometimes I used the, the diaries just as a memory so I would go and write it later. Um, but I did take the time to listen to myself and personally for myself I prefer making these diaries best in the dark at night um, not only just as a means of trying to grapple with any messy grey clouds but as a means to offload 
that last bit of thinking from the day, you know, to totally clear my head. And um, actually that led to having a better night's sleep. And it was in those moments um, of listening, deeply listening to myself, that I began to notice many repetitions, um, as well as threads of that messy grey cloud, that I could begin to start unpicking into smaller pieces or tugging at threads if it was a big knot. And um, I could finally start the untangling process. And also the process of categorising. Is this something that belongs in the um, physical and practical category or is it something that belongs in the emotional sort of psychological category? So, um, and that's despite all of those issues, as we all know, anyone with a messy grey cloud will know, all of those issues, psychological, emotional, practical, physical, all sort of somehow get all tangled into each other. You know, we all know that and feed into each other. So a good example would be finances or health versus emotional baggage and falsely held beliefs and guilt. And even the circumstances that led right up into having this messy grey cloud in the first place. Um, so the fact that I decided initially, as I discussed in last week's video, to put that messy grey cloud to one side to begin with, just to give myself a little bit, bit of space and peace, sort of gave me um, the extra bit of strength and positivity I needed to be able to sort of look at that messy cloud square on. So um, if we go back to um, the practical, physical, emotional, psychological, so you could be off work due to poor health, your finances have taken a hit, and your personal beliefs about being a failure and about never being able to get back on your feet, as well as many other people's judgments about you, um, you're isolated, you're alone, and you seem to be upset all the time. So we're separating the physical and practical enough so we can begin to deal with those issues, all the while continuing to work on ourselves. So for example, I've identified um, I'm feeling really lousy because I don't have enough finances, so let's try and get on top of the finances. And actually my health is not as good as it should be and I'm waiting for appointments, but, but what can I actually do um, to improve my health while I'm waiting for those appointments? So do I need to take a look at what I'm eating, how much exercise I'm getting and things along those lines. So um, I'm not saying that we don't keep track of how we're feeling um, using that measuring stick to monitor how we're feeling so that we can still be watchful and observant to any repetitive, unhelpful thinking patterns. I mean, if you're at rock bottom or even in a bad place, um, all you know is that you really want to stop being there. So I totally recommend that you try this deep listening for yourself. I have said that listening to myself was the best option for me, um, but by all means go ahead and experiment with journaling too, and as always let me know how you get on. I do just want to mention again my campaign for the need for cognitive behavioural therapy to start as soon as possible within our education systems. Um, our children should be taught skills and tools that will help them develop these skills of deep listening, firstly for themselves, um, and even only for themselves, because ultimately that skill of deep listening to oneself will eventually have a knock-on effect of naturally creating deep listening skills for other people too. And who knows, perhaps algorithms and apps of the future could also be part of this um, video diary, deep listening. So why not give this deep listening practice a try for yourself and as always let me know how you get on and um, I've managed to stay within the 15 minutes and I probably haven't done it justice so let me know if you would like um, a more in-depth discussion about this self-therapy but enjoy your tea. Have a beautiful week and um, I'm looking for the thing to stop the video. Have a really, really, really lovely day.